No Canada, Chapter 5, page 53. The Government of Canada. Canada's government is a combination of three different types of government. It is a federal state, a parliamentary democracy, and a constitutional monarchy. Our form of government was established at the time of Confederation in the British North America Act of 1867, BNA Act. Before Confederation, Canada was a group of different colonies, each with a different government. The BNA Act united the colonies into a new country with a constitution and a set of written laws. In 1982, the Constitution was patriated to Canada and the Charter of Rights and Freedoms was added. Federal State Canada is a federal state. A federal state is a state or a country that has a central government. The country is also divided into smaller provinces, states, or regions. Usually, the federal government makes decisions that affect the whole country. Provincial, state, or regional governments make local decisions. Canada is a big country, the second largest in the world. Different parts of the country have very different needs. For this reason, Canada is divided into provinces and territories to make it easier to govern. In Canada, there are three levels of government, federal, provincial or territorial, and municipal, town or city. The capital of the whole country is Ottawa. The parliament buildings for the federal government are located in Ottawa. Our federal government takes care of things that are important for the whole country, nationally and internationally. These are things that need to be the same for all provinces and territories. Some of federal responsibilities include defense, foreign policy, currency, trade and communications, criminal law, and citizenship. Needs may be different from province to province depending on resources. For example, Alberta doesn't have the same needs as Nova Scotia, and Quebec doesn't have the same needs as British Columbia. The provincial and territorial governments take care of what is important for the people of just their region. They make policies that work in their region but may not work in another. Some provincial responsibilities include natural resources, education, health care, property, and civil rights, highways, and rules for municipal governments. Each province and territory has its own elected legislative assembly located in its own capital city. In Alberta, that would be in Edmonton. The legislature building is in Edmonton. Some things are shared between the federal and provincial governments, agriculture, environment, and immigration and citizenship are shared responsibilities. Policing is also shared in many provinces and territories. Ontario and Quebec have their own provincial police forces. The rest of Canada uses the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, RCMP. Municipal governments look after what is important in towns, cities, and municipal regions. They are responsible for local planning, streets and roads, sanitation, garbage removal, recreation, public transit, and emergency services like firefighting and ambulances. Larger cities have their own police forces. Smaller towns rely on the RCMP. Municipal government consists of a mayor or reeve and aldermen or councillors who pass bylaws for their community. First Nations communities also have local governments with responsibilities that are similar 
to the responsibilities of municipal governments. They also take care of housing and schools on the reserves. They have band chiefs and counselors. They are regional and national, or there are regional and national aboriginal organizations that represent First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people when they need to work with the federal or provincial governments. Elections for all levels of government are by secret ballot, but the rules can be different from place to place. It is important to know the rules before you vote. Parliamentary Democracy In a democracy, people vote for representatives who will govern the country for them. Canada is a parliamentary democracy. Citizens elect representatives to go to Parliament. These representatives are called Members of Parliament, or MPs. They are responsible for passing laws, watching government expenses, and keeping the government accountable for its decisions. MPs need to be able to explain to the people who elected them, their constituents, why they made certain decisions. The members of parliament usually belong to a political party, a group of people who feel the same way about how the country should be governed. After an election, the party that has the most representatives is in power. The prime minister, PM, is the leader of the party in power. He or she appoints people to help him or her look after departments or portfolios like finance, agriculture, and foreign affairs. These people form the cabinet. The cabinet helps the prime minister because the MP can't know everything about every department. Cabinet ministers report the issues or problems in their portfolios and make suggestions about how to deal with them. Parliament has three parts. One, the sovereign. This is the queen or king. The sovereign is the head of state. Because the head of state doesn't live in Canada, she or he, is represented by the Governor General of Canada and the Lieutenant Governors of the provinces. The Sovereign's position is hereditary. Number two, the Senate. This is a group of people who have been selected and appointed by the Prime Minister. Senators are then approved by the Governor General Senators can stay in the Senate until they are 75, even after the Prime Minister and Governor General change. The Senate looks at bills, proposals for new laws, that the House of Commons wants to pass. The Senate may make suggestions about how to improve the bills. Senators do not make bills but they must pass a bill for it to become a law. They also look at other issues they think are important. Number three, the House of Commons. These are the members of Parliament, MPs. They are the representatives elected by the people. The Prime Minister is the head of government and is the leader of the party in power. Members of Parliament decide on bills they want to make into laws. Often, the Prime Minister and the Cabinet write the bills, and the rest of Parliament reviews and passes them or not. However, any member of Parliament can suggest bills. A bill must be passed by the House of Commons and the Senate, and then receive royal assent to become a law. Royal assent is just a formality because the sovereign, head of state, 
always gives royal assent to laws made by the government. Turning a bill into a law is a long process. Once a bill is proposed, there is a first reading. The bill is read in the House of Commons, and it is printed so everyone can study it. At the second reading, all the MPs debate the bill. Then, the bill goes to the committee stage where members of the committee study it very carefully and can suggest changes. They report what they have learned to the House of Commons where other changes can be made. The final bill is given a third reading and voted on. The image on this page comes from the Discover Canada document which shows all the steps in how a bill becomes a law. This image is not found in No Canada, but it was copied from Discover Canada for your reference. The governments in the provinces and territories work the same way as the federal government, just with different names. Also, there is no Senate. The elected representatives go to their provincial or territorial legislatures. Their job is to make new laws. They are also members of political parties. The political party with the most representatives is in power. The representatives in different provinces have different names. In Alberta, they are called Members of the Legislative Assembly, or MLAs. In other, other provinces, they can be called Members of the National Assembly, MNAs, members of the Provincial Parliament, MPPs, or members of the House of Assembly, MHAs. The leader of the party in power is the Premier. The Yukon Territory has a legislative assembly and a party system like the provinces. The Northwest Territories and Nunavut do not. They govern by consensus which means that everyone must agree to a bill before it can become a law. In all three territories, the head of the government is the commissioner. Constitutional monarchy. A constitutional monarchy is a system where there is a title and position, like queen or king, that is inherited, but the monarch has to rule according to the country's constitution. The constitution will tell the monarch what her or his duties and responsibilities are. Canada is a constitutional monarchy. Our head of state, or sovereign, is Queen Elizabeth II. She cannot change our laws or freedoms, but she can help make sure laws are respected and maintained. The Queen is important because she doesn't belong to any political party. She represents all Canadians. The Sovereign is also the head of the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth is a group of 54 nations that were once British colonies. They cooperate economically, socially, and culturally. These countries can be different in many ways but the Queen keeps them all together. Important fact, the head of state is the sovereign who rules according to the Constitution. The head of state does not change unless the sovereign dies or abdicates, gives up the throne. The head of government is the prime minister who does the actual governing of the country. The prime minister changes when the party in power loses an election or when the party decides they want a new leader. Canada's system of government. Canada's system of government has three branches. They all try to work together. One, the executive branch is where the final decisions are made. It includes the governor general, the Prime Minister, and the Cabinet. 
the members of parliament that helped them prime minister. Number two, the legislative branch creates the laws. It includes the governor general, the House of Commons, the representatives elected by Canadians, and the Senate, the appointed people who must approve the bills to turn them into laws. Number three, the judicial branch makes sure that justice is done, the laws are obeyed, and that people are protected. It includes the judges, the courts, and the police. There are provincial courts, federal courts, and the Supreme Court of Canada. There's a good picture of Canada's system of government in Discover Canada, page 29. Here we see the image from Discover Canada, page 29. It shows Canada's system of government. It shows Parliament at the top. Now that is, Parliament uh, consists of the Sovereign, represented in Canada by the Governor-General, who sits in the Parliament building with uh, the House of Commons or the members of Parliament. We see the Senate, they're appointed by the Prime Minister. And we see the House of Commons. These are all the representatives that are elected by voters throughout Canada. In the 2019 election, there were 338 members of Parliament that were elected by voters in Canada. We see that we have the executive branch, which consists of the Prime Minister and his cabinet. And you see the legislative branch, which is the, the um, Governor General, the Senate, and the House of Commons, or the House of MPs. Then down below we see the judiciary. That means the court system and the law system, the policing. So at the top of that is the Supreme Court of Canada, which is the highest court. Uh, there are nine judges that are appointed by the Governor General, but uh, there are smaller courts. There's a federal court of Canada, and then there are provincial courts. Uh, provincial courts are found in each city or community.